Um, hello. So today I thought, since I talk a lot about movies and TV shows in my collection that I have a lot on this channel, and uh, I also have quite a large book collection, so I thought, why not talk about books to do with movies? Um, specifically, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, novelizations and tie-in covers. You know, basically when, the, when the, the movie or a TV show gets made of a book, they reprint... Is one of them say they reprint the book with the artwork and the thing and obviously novelization is a book based on a movie or a TV show, um, so I just thought I'd you know talk about them and because uh, I do have quite a few, and uh, yeah we'll start off with some some Tolkien as you saw the Hobbit, um, this was my favorite book as a child but um, despite that I never actually owned a copy till the till the um, the first film was it the unexpected journey an unexpected journey came out um yeah I had the the, the graphic novel adaptation and then I read the actual book at school like because the school library had it so I took it out but I never actually owned the the proper book till the film came out I saw this in the I think asda or something and I thought you know I don't actually own the book and that's actually quite a nice cover like a lot of people don't like movie tie-in covers they find them quite ugly having just like you know picture from the film on there and i can sort of see that but i do think some of them do look quite nice and this one does look very nice there uh, with uh, bilbo coming out of the hobbit hole much nicer than the ones for the other two hobbit films because each new film they did a new reprint and uh yeah don't really like the hobbit films but um uh i do like that poster a lot so that's on there and then next we have the Lord of the Rings trilogy, so Fellowship, Two Towers, no, that's Return of the King. This is Two Towers, and then Return of the King. These are from, I guess, 2001, so these are around the time the first film came out, and uh, they all have artwork from the first film to the bit where they're all going up the mountain. In fact, if you put them all together, it makes that image, which is uh, quite cool. Um, yeah, these aren't the copies I, I had as a kid. I had the, the, um, uh, was it the regular HarperCollins ones, the ones with the black covers and the rings, like there was, I think one of them had a green ring, one had a yellow ring, one of them had a red ring, and, uh, yeah, I read Fellowship in, like, two days, um, Two Towers <laughs> took me ages to read, and then I never finished Return of the King, and I just got rid of them, because I thought I never did finish those books. But then I, I, I thought, you know, I probably should, years later, I thought, you know, I, I probably should finish the three of them. So I bought an omnibus, like the three in one. It was a big, thick thing. And the trouble is normally when I like, um, when I read, I tend to read like when I'm on the bus or the train or something, you know, going to work. Um, so I like to carry the book and uh, the big omnibus was very thick. So it was a bit difficult. So, you know, it wasn't exactly ideal for just carrying around in your bag and just taking it so uh, I got rid of that and I bought these because I saw them on eBay quite cheap and since I'm a big fan of the Peter Jackson films I thought why not get the tie-in adaptations and these are the, always the ones I always saw in like used places like I mean it was either these or the ones that I had so I'm very familiar so I was I was really like these covers because you know I always saw them every a lot in like used places um, yeah, uh, so I do intend to finish those books eventually. Um, just that they are quite long, <laughs> as you mentioned. Um, but yeah, uh, next we have some Star Wars. I have um, the uh, the prequel trilogy, um, big omnibus, um, slightly larger book, but it's not unlike the Lord of the Rings one. It's not like mm, absolutely massive, so it's a bit easier to carry around with you. Um, on uh. Yeah, you know, on the bus and that. Uh, yeah. I haven't read these yet. I've heard Revenge of the Sith, and I particularly wanted to read Revenge of the Sith, but um, I got the other of us because I thought, why not read the other two? But Revenge of the Sith is apparently a really, really good book. Much better than the film. I mean, I do like the film. Um, or I did, at least. I used to really like Revenge of the Sith, but all the memes have kind of ruined it for me. Like, I can't take it seriously anymore. Because every time some character says a line that's become a meme... Which is pretty much every line in the whole bloody script. Um, I just, it just makes me giggle. So I uh, can't take it seriously. But the book, the book is apparently really, really good. Even if you don't like the film, definitely read the book because it is apparently very, very good. Um, who wrote each of these? Actually, so uh, Phantom Menace is by Terry Brooks. 
Attack of the Clones is R.A. Salvatore, and Revenge of the Sith is Matthew Stover. Uh, next, we have um, the original Star Wars, A New Hope. Um, says George Lucas on the book, but it was actually ghostwritten by Alan Dean Foster. And, uh, yeah, but um, George Lucas got credited for, like, contractual reasons, I believe. Uh, yeah, good book. I read this recently. It's uh, it's quite quite an uh, enjoyable book. And, like, kind of like an old... The way it's written, it's very kind of like those old-fashioned sci-fi, B-level-grade, pulpy sci-fi stuff from, like, the 30s, which Star Wars is kind of... You know, emulating. So yeah, it was a good fun read, and it has a lot of the deleted scenes in it. So, um, like the Jabba scene, and um, the bit with Biggs and that, and obviously this is before the special edition, and then the Blu-ray with all the the rest of the deleted scenes. So, um, yeah, this was the only way you could experience those, I believe, at the time. So actually, this came out not this edition. Uh, this came, the book came out about six months before the film, so if you, you know, <laughs> good thing the internet wasn't around then, because, um, you know, <laughs> people would have been like, uh, there would have been spoilers all over the place, but yeah, this is the 40th anniversary hardcover, which uses the uh, the famous poster, the Hildebrandt Brothers version of the poster, there were two versions, there was one by Tom Young, and then, the uh, which they thought looked a bit too dark, George Lucas thought it looked a bit too dark, so then he had the Hildebrandt Brothers sort of do the same images but do it make it a bit more um this realistic looking so i actually prefer this version of the poster but it, they're both great it's the same poster just this one looks a bit more cartoony and uh the look and layer don't look anything like mark hamill and carrie fisher unlike the uh tom young version but uh yeah really nice really nice cover um next we have since i had that in hardback i thought i would try and get the other hardcover copies of the other two so I got these uh, reprints from the 90s, which uh, were a little difficult to get hold of, but I uh, managed to get them for a decent price. We have The Empire Strikes Back by John D Donald F. Glutt. Um, yeah, I haven't read this. Um, I do remember, wasn't this the uh, cover on the, the VHS from like the, like the very last, you know, the very last VHS with the original versions, like the UK versions of those, wasn't this the cover? I believe they were. I'm not sure. A, f a friend of mine has the um, has that VHS box set. I need to like have a look at them and check. But yeah, um, I'm pretty sure these were the covers, and they are quite nice painted covers. So Empire Strikes Back, some quite bad sun fading, um, and Return of the Jedi by uh, James Khan. Next we'll uh, have on to um, The Lost World, the Jurassic Park sequel. Um, a bit T-Rex and the Spine. Yeah, I basically, I bought the uh, two Jurassic Park books. It was like on Amazon, they had like, I know it was basically, you could buy it for like 10 quid, you get the two books and like a, together in the, this is just the copy that came. Uh, so I guess this is still in print if, because uh, I bought this brand new, so... Um, yeah, quite enjoy the Jurassic Park books. Um, I actually think they're a little bit better than the films. This one's certainly better than the Lost World film. Um, but yeah, Michael Crichton, good stuff. Um, real, real page turners, those. Uh, my copy of the first Jurassic Park's not like a tie -in, it's just the regular paperback. Uh, next we have the, uh, the Ipcrest file by Len Dayton. The film... This is the tie-in to the TV show from, like, I think last year or this year. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I haven't seen the TV show. The, the film, the Michael Caine was in a film version in the 60s, and that's one of my favourite films. Uh, so I was meant to read the book because I really love the film. And uh, I saw this, and uh, I haven't seen the TV series yet, but I really love this cover. It's very has a very 60s paperback look to it, which, uh, considering it was written in the 60s, uh, is very appropriate. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really, again, I haven't seen the show. I've heard it's... Um, all right, though. I might give it a watch. Um, I missed it at the time, uh, but uh, I should probably give it a watch. But um, yeah, I just really like the real sixties vibe the cover had. Yeah. Um, the TV show one. Well, it's not really a tie-in cover so much as just the regular cover, but they've put like a, um, like a, not a sticker, but like sort of a circle, so you know, thing. But you've got a uh, Killing for Company, which is a book about um. Dennis Nielsen, the serial killer, 
and it's just the regular cover, but they put a little red circle telling you about the... It, it was turned into a TV series called Des with David Tennant. And, um, yeah, they, this is one of those really lazy ones where they just they don't do, like, a tying cover per se. It's just a... They just put a little label saying, now a major motion picture, or in this case, a TV series. Um, yeah, didn't see the TV series, but um, I do quite like true crime books, and this is meant to be a very good one. So, yeah. Ah, some Bond here. Um, Casino Royale. This isn't the copy of the book. I used to have one of the original... Um, not original, but I had one of the pan paperbacks from the 60s, but it was in really bad shape, so eventually I replaced it with a more modern copy, which is we have here, the um, tie-in version of the film. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, big Bond fan. Um, Casino Royale, the film, was never one of my favourites, but uh, I really like it. Um, I think because I'd actually read the book beforehand and have this terrible habit of when, uh, see, when I read a book, I kind of make, I'm making the film version in my head. So when I actually see the film version, it's, it's, uh, I'm just comparing it to this non existent version I made up. And it's like, so, um, yeah, I find it very difficult to just sort of watch it as a film. So I was, I was never the biggest fan of some because it was like, it wasn't how I would do it, but I like it a lot more now. And, uh, yeah, the book's very good too. Um, definitely worth reading if you're a fan of the film. Uh, I was never a big fan of this poster though. Um, I was like preferred the the teaser poster where he's like you know sitting at the casino table with the gun on the table and it's very shadowy. I wish they'd use that as the cover. But yeah, casino around. And these next few, they're not strictly film times. They weren't made like they weren't printed to like time to the film, but they have artwork. They use they're the penguin, um, just the penguin modern classics versions that were around when I was a kid, and um. Uh, they just they use but they use artwork from the film so uh, like photos from the film so I'm just gonna count them. It's part of the video. Uh, so we have a omnibus of From Russia of Love, Doctor No, and Goldfinger with a picture of Sean Connery uh, from Goldfinger on the in the Fort Knox scene. Yep, haven't read these ones yet. Uh, I've only read the first four. No, I've read. Um, I've read. Uh, Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, Moonraker, um, the Octopussy Short Story Collection. I'm in the middle of reading Diamonds Are Forever at the moment. And uh, I also, when I was a lot younger, I read um, this one, Thunderball. In fact, uh, you can see this is quite battered, unfortunately, because um, I carried it around in my school bag. And my school bag had this terrible habit of um, kind of destroying my books. So you can see it's, we can see it is in a pretty bad way, but uh, still readable. And uh, again, you've got a picture of Sean Connery. Not sure if it's actually from Thunderball or one of the other films, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a blurring photo actually. I don't know if you you see the tear there, but <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually slightly out of focus photo, so not the best photo. I don't know why they used this one um, of all other not other. I'm sure they could have gotten the license to use better photo than this of Sean Connery as Bond, and uh, then we also have uh, You Only Live Twice. This isn't a photo from You Only Live Twice because he doesn't wear a tux in that film. Um, yeah, there's a question. Um, what are the only two Bond films where James Bond doesn't wear a tuxedo? There's two of them. This is one. Can any of you in the comments tell me what the other one is? Um, well, technically he doesn't wear one in From Russia of Love because it's the... Um, you see Sean Connery in a tux, but it's actually a guy wearing a mask of his face. But... Um, uh, <laughs> So, so that sort of counts, but it doesn't. But basically, it's like there's the only twice, and there's another one where he doesn't wear a tux at all. And uh, can you let me know in the comments what that is, if you know what it is? And uh, I, I, you probably get you won't get a prize, but um, you know, <laughs> you'll get to look very clever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, next, we have a, a omnibus of the alien. As it was then, the Alien trilogy. So this is the complete Alien omnibus, of Alien, Aliens, and Alien Three. Because this was nineteen ninety three, so Alien Resurrection hadn't come out yet. Um, again, Alan Dean Foster, um, like the Star Wars novelization. These are kind of cool because at the time it was only we could get see a lot of the deleted scenes. Obviously, those are on the um, longer cuts because um, uh, you know, obviously you get the director's cuts. The director's cut of Alien, the special edition of Aliens, and the assembly cut of Alien 3. A lot of those extra bits you could only really 
get in these. In fact, there's actually other deleted scenes that aren't. This is the famous airlock scene from the first Alien, which was partially shot, but um, was unfinished. So, yeah. Alien's my favourite film, and I thought, well, I've got to have the novelisation of that. And, um, yeah, I thought it was worth getting on the bus to get the other two. I'm not sure if... I know there was a... There was a novelization of Resurrection, but I don't think Alan Dean Foster wrote it. Uh, I have to pick that up at some point. Even though I don't really like the film, I just uh, I thought I might as well get the complete set. I'll get if there's novelizations of Prometheus and um, Alien Covenant, I'll get those too. Because again, even though the, the biggest fan of the later Alien films, I, you know, I, I I might as well get the complete set. Uh, next we have. Um, by Fred Hoyle and John Elliott, the Andromeda Anthology. So, uh, there were, it was in the fifties. There were, it was um, there was a TV series called A for Andromeda, and then there was a sequel series called The Andromeda Breakthrough, and then they were novelized. And this is the novelization. You can see it's part of the sci-fi masterworks. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't like. I don't think it does. It mention it's the it doesn't mention it's based on a TV series, but I'm pretty sure the TV series came for like these are based on the TV series. Yeah, I haven't read them, but um, you know, I've heard that uh, I like old BBC sci-fi stuff. And since most of the episodes of the show, well, um, there's only a couple. I think like one episode of A for Andromeda survives, and like a couple from the Andromeda because a lot of TV shows back then, especially in the UK, they used to just wipe them after they showed them. So <laughs> there's a lot of TV shows that don't exist anymore from back then. And uh, there was a DVD of the surviving episodes, but it's out of print and it goes to silly money. And any case, uh, this this will be like the full story rather than just odd episodes. So I thought I'll get the book and then I can experience the show in some form. Uh, shows rather, the Disaster Artist, um, which is a book about it's about the making of the room. Top of the, the the room is for those of you. I'm sure you all know what the room is, but for those of you who don't, it's like a really terrible film. Directed by and starring this guy Tommy Wiseau, and it's it's just awful, and it sort of became a big cult classic because of, because it's like one of the worst films ever made, and it's like unintentionally really funny. And uh, one of the actors in the film, Greg Sestero, wrote a book about the making of it, which was then turned into a film starring uh, James Franco and his brother Dave Franco. And um, yeah, I got the tie-in version. I didn't like the film, the Disaster Artist film, very much, partly because I can't stand. Those two, I mean, even before the the you know the stuff about James Franco being a creep came out, I never liked him. I always found them both very irritating. So I didn't really like the film, but the book is really really funny. It's a really good read if you haven't read the book. Um, yeah. I also follow Greg Sestero on I think Facebook. He's uh, yeah, really really cool guy. Um, uh, next we have. Um, Alfred Hitchcock in the making of Psycho, again with the film tie-in cover for the um, the Hitchcock movie with Anthony Hopkins is playing Hitchcock and Helen Mirren and his wife, as his wife Alma, um, which was about the making of Psycho. Again, didn't really like that film very much. The only reason I picked this up is because it's like the only version of the book you can get anymore. I think you can get the original, like a non-film tie-in version, which really annoys me because I really didn't like that film. But... Um, like I say, it's the same text, so it doesn't really matter. You do get some nice photos in here. Um, yeah, big Hitchcock fan. Uh, and Psycho is one of my favourite Hitchcock films. So, yeah. Next we have um, The Queen's Gambit, Walter Tevis. Uh, I've not seen the TV series with Anya Taylor-Joy in there. Um, is it, I might watch it though. She's a very good actress. So I do like her. I watched her in the, uh, um, God, was out the Northman. She was very good in that. I thought, and uh, yeah, the reason I picked up the book is because Walter Tevis also wrote, The Hustler, and The Man Who Felt Worth, and the movie versions of those are. I really like the film versions of those two books. So I thought, well, I'll pick up. You know. I also have the the book of the man who felt worth, but it's not Italian, so I'm not gonna show it in the video. But um, I thought, well, I like the films of a couple of us other. other uh, the, 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 I've I've got the I like the film versions of a couple of his other books, so I'll pick this up, and uh, yeah, again, I'll probably give the Netflix show a watch because I've heard it is very good. 
and uh, yeah, Black Klansman. I've actually seen the film of this. Um, the film is very good, very funny. It's like a um, Ron Stallworth was an African American police officer, and he basically it's sort of the story of how he um, <laughs> he basically phones up the Ku Klux Klan, pretending to be a white guy, and says he's interested in joining them. And um, then you have Alan Adam Driver's character, who I think is he's not a, he's like based he's not like based on a particular person. He's kind of a um, he's sort of a fictional character, but like basically, Ron Stallworth he, he started this police operation where he phoned the, the he called the the clan as a joke, saying he was going to join, and then he sort of started this operation where he sent like a white cop to pretend to be him and sort of infiltrate the clan. And uh, Adam Driver's character, I believe, is a fictional character, but he basically takes the role of the guy who infiltrated the, you know, the organisation in real life. And uh, yeah, film, I really enjoyed the film. Very, very funny film. And uh, again, uh, picked up the book because I wanted to see what they, I'm ready yet, but I wanted to see what they changed from the real story.